Hello and welcome to yet another interesting video by Pale Blue Thoughts. Who or what kills most humans every year? What do you think? Is it sharks? No. Snakes? Not quite. Accidents? Nope. Humans themselves? Barely. The credit goes to yet another animal that you would even find in your own home. Yes, it could be right there next to you as we speak. It causes the death of nearly 700,000 to a million humans every year on an average. Almost 5% of all humans who ever lived have been wiped off by this monster. Beware of the... Well, if I expose a secret now, who would watch the entire video? So let me reveal it after the intro. Welcome to Pale Blue Thoughts, the channel which debunks pseudoscience and promotes scientific temper. Well, some of you may have guessed it already, but the credit of the deadliest animal on this planet which has killed off the maximum people goes to the teeny tiny, eeny miny mosquito. Yeah, finding it hard to believe? The numbers say otherwise. By transmitting diseases like malaria, yellow fever, chikungunya, dengue, zika, encephalitis and filariasis, mosquitoes cause the deaths of more people than any other animal. So in this video, we will discuss some interesting aspects of this deadly killer and we will also see why mosquito bites only some people and ignores some others. Yeah, they do that. And if you want to escape getting yourself added onto the long list of mosquito induced deaths, stay till the end of this video. Mosquitoes are members of a biological group of small flies called Calicidae. There are some 3600 different species of mosquitoes that we have identified. Mosquitoes have a slender body, one pair of wings, three pairs of long legs and elongated mouth parts called proboscis which they use to suck the blood out of the animals that it bites. They don't leave any kind of animals alone. They feed on mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians and even some fish. The mosquito life cycle consists of egg, larva, pupa and finally the adult stage. Eggs are laid on stagnant water surfaces and they hatch into larvae that feed on aquatic algae and other organic material present in the water. Then it goes into a pupa stage and finally emerge out as an adult mosquito. The entire period can last anywhere between 5 to 40 days depending on the species. Some species, especially those living in freezing or waterless conditions, have evolved to delay their development for months until favorable conditions like available water and temperature are achieved. This is called as diapause. I am sure you may have heard that it is only the female mosquitoes that bite us and drink our blood. Ever wondered why? Many carry this misconception that mosquitoes drink blood because it is their food. That is wrong. They need proteins in order to produce their eggs and they have found out that the best place to get proteins is from the blood of other animals. Blood of animals are a rich source of proteins and lipids which the mosquitoes use to make their yolk. That is why only female mosquitoes drink blood because only they lay eggs. Their food is actually plant juices and nectar of flowers. Once it is taken a blood meal, the female uses the proteins to make their eggs or increase the number of eggs. This reproductive strategy in which a female insect must eat a particular sort of meal like blood before laying eggs is called anatogeny. Some species like the Culex for example produce eggs autogenously without drinking blood during their first cycle of reproduction. But for further cycles, they need the proteins for which they have to drink blood. A mosquito has a variety of ways of finding nectar or its prey which includes chemical, visual and heat sensors. Female mosquitoes hunt their blood source by detecting organic substances such as carbon dioxide and octanol which is found in the breath produced by animals. Sweat is another method through which the mosquitoes identifies us in order to bite. Sweat also contains octanol and non-aldehyde, a chemical that especially the Culex species love. Aedes, on the other hand, prefer sulcaton, again found in our scent and sweat. A large part of the mosquito's sense of smell is devoted to sniffing out blood sources. Of 72 types of order receptors on its antennae, at least 27 are tuned to detect chemicals found in perspiration. Most mosquito species feed during dawn or dusk. During the day, most mosquitoes rest in a cool place and wait for the evenings. The feeding structure of the mosquito is the proboscis. More specifically, 
The visible part of the proboscis is the labium. When the mosquito first lands on an animal, it will touch the tip of the labium to the skin in various places. Sometimes it will bite almost straight away, while other times it will prod around, apparently looking for a suitable place. Presumably, this probing is a search for a place with easily accessible blood vessels, but the exact mechanism is not known. Prior to and during blood feeding, blood sucking mosquitoes inject their saliva into the bodies of animals. This saliva acts as an anticoagulant. Without it, the female mosquito's proboscis might become clogged with blood clots. The saliva also is the main route by which it transfers pathogens into our bloodstream. The salivary glands of the mosquitoes can be a host to many pathogens which can enter into our system through the saliva. A mosquito bite often leaves an itchy skin or a raised bump on the victim's skin, which is caused by histamines trying to fight off the protein left by the mosquito. The mosquito saliva has mechanisms to effectively block our hemostasis system or our body's method to control bleeding. Saglin is a protein produced by the salivary glands of mosquitoes which aids them in this. All said and done, the saliva of the mosquito is being researched upon to find anti-clotting drugs that could come useful in managing cardiovascular diseases. Now let us come to understand why some people get bitten more than others. There is significant evidence that suggests that people with type O blood gets bitten more. Perhaps mosquitoes like the taste of type O blood for some reason. Heavy breathers, high body heat and people with a lot of skin bacteria gets preference too. People who exercise gets bitten more. That is because the skin breathes out a lot of carbon dioxide post a rigorous exercise and this helps the mosquitoes find you easier. Pregnant women too are appealing to the mosquitoes. In fact, there is a professor named Imo Hansen of the New Mexico State University who does a lot of research in this area. Using a device called as Y-Tube, he has found out that certain people are more susceptible to mosquito bites than others. Other researchers have found out that identical twins are more likely to be attracting mosquitoes than non-identical twins. This strengthens the hypothesis that the DNA could have a great role in people being seen as attractive by mosquitoes. Identical twins have similar DNA structures than non-identical twins and this could be a factor. In fact, when you contract malaria, the disease changes your body in such a manner that it makes you more attractive to mosquitoes and this leads to more mosquito bites and more chance of the spreading of the disease to others. So the real reason why you are more likely to be bitten by a mosquito could really be because of genes and your order. Some people believe that diet affects attractiveness to mosquitoes. Consumption of garlic, vitamin B and beer are supposed to repel mosquitoes. Double-blinded trials have demonstrated that garlic and vitamin B were ineffective and beer has been shown to actually increase biting incidence. Yeah, if you have consumed too much of beer, then you are not likely to know if they bite you or together lift you and take you somewhere else and drop you. Now there are some people who believe that mosquitoes can transmit HIV. Studies have shown clearly that the virus disappears in the mosquito after about one or two days, the time required for the mosquito to digest the blood meal. Since the virus does not survive to reproduce and invade the salivary glands of the mosquitoes, biological transmission of HIV is not possible. Now let us see various ways to repel or reduce mosquito bites. One, using a mosquito net, wearing long clothing that covers the skin and is tucked in to seal up holes. Avoiding the outdoors during dawn and dusk when mosquitoes are most active. Keeping air moving to prevent mosquitoes from landing such as by using a fan. Wearing light colored clothing as light objects are harder for mosquitoes to detect. Apart from this, you can use insecticides and insect repellents. Mosquito coils have been found to be effective. They contain a chemical named pyrethrum which repels mosquitoes. Mosquito coils are considered to be safe insecticides for humans and pets although some studies highlight concerns when they are used in closed rooms. Other studies in rats conclude that mosquito coils are not a significant health risk although some organisms may experience temporary sensory irritation but there are no adverse effects on other parts of the body. The study concluded that with normal use mosquito coils are unlikely to be a health risk. However, mosquito coils can be fire hazards. In 1999, a fire in a South Korean three-story dormitory caused the death of 23 people when a mosquito coil was left unattended. The strong smell from the smoke may also stay on clothes and furniture. Next in line are insect repellents which can be in the form of creams and gels and electronic devices like mats and vaporizers. The main ingredient in these are a chemical called as diethyltolamide 
popularly known as DEET or DEET. This study, done in 2002 and published in the New England Journal of Medicine, found it to be the most effective in repelling mosquitoes. DEET seems to work by binding to carbon dioxide receptors in the proboscis that a mosquito uses to probe a person's skin for blood. Rather than kill the mosquito, DEET somehow blocks the insect's ability to drink your blood. Many people have raised concerns about the safety of this chemical. However, experts who have studied DEET say that there are no significant health risks when using DEET repellents in the general population, either in adults or children. Some naturally occurring repellents that have some effectiveness as per research include neem oil and citronella oil. However, their effectiveness is lower compared to synthetic products. There are also products available based on ultrasound which claim to be insect repellents. However, these electronic devices have been shown to be ineffective based on studies done by the United States Environmental Protection Agency and many universities. All said and done, it goes without saying that mosquitoes kill more people than people killing people. Some estimates say that half of the entire human population that has ever lived have been killed off by these small winged insects. Now that estimate is very likely to be too high and is debated. But there is no doubt to the fact that more people die due to mosquito-borne illnesses than through any other means. This makes the tiny weeny mosquito the deadliest of all animals. Who would have thought of that? I hope you liked this episode and would share it with others if you found the information helpful. I shall be back with more scientific content real soon. Till then, it's bye-bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.